Hello, in this video we're going to solve an equation with two square roots. We have the square root of x squared plus 5x minus 6 plus the square root of x squared plus 3x minus 3 and it's all equal to 1. Let's go ahead and carefully work through this. Solution. The first step is going to be to isolate one of the square roots so that we can eliminate it by squaring both sides. So let's start by taking this second square root here and subtracting it from both sides. I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of x squared plus 5x minus 6. And then we're subtracting this piece over. So because it's plus, it's going to be negative on the other side. So it's 1 minus the square root of x squared plus 3x and then minus 3. Okay, so now we have a single square root on one side. So to eliminate the square root, we can just simply square both sides. I'm going to put a parenthesis here and a parenthesis here and square it. And then one here and one here and square it. On the left hand side, when you square the square root, it goes away completely. So we just have x squared plus 5x minus 6. And that's equal to now, for this piece here, there is a very convenient formula, which I'm going to write down over here so you see it. If you have a minus b, and you want to square this quantity, think of a as your first term and b as your second. So you square the first, you multiply them, so you get minus ab, and then you double them. So minus 2ab, and then you always put a plus, and then you square the last, so plus b squared. In this particular example, our a going to be 1, and our b is going to be the square root of x squared plus 3x minus 3. Squaring the first one, we get 1 squared, which is 1. That's just going to be 1. Then minus, and then you multiply them and double them. So we're just going to get 2 square root x squared plus 3x minus 3. And then you put a plus sign, and you square the last one. When you square the last term, um, the square root's going to go away. So you just get x squared plus 3x minus 3. All right, so now we can combine some like terms here on the right-hand side. We can, namely, we can combine the 1 and the minus 3. Let's go ahead and do that first. So we have x squared plus 5x minus 6 is equal to, and then 1 minus 3 is minus 2. And we have minus 2 square root x squared plus 3x minus 3. And we have plus x squared and then the plus 3x. It's still all hanging out. So we still have a square root here. So let's go ahead and try to move everything over to the left hand side and try to isolate this square root. So notice you can subtract x squared from both sides. So those will basically cancel. So they're gone. And we have a 5x here. So if we subtract 3x from both sides, I'll write it here so you see it, minus 3x, minus 3x. That's going to give us a 2x, which I'll write in a minute. And then you can add 2 to both sides as well, so plus 2, plus 2. So we're going to get 5x minus 3x, which is 2x. Negative 6 plus 2 is minus 4. Gone, gone. And so this is equal to minus 2 times the square root of x squared plus 3x minus 3. And we could square both sides now, but it's a little bit easier if we clean this up. So note you can factor out a 2 here, so you get two parentheses, x minus 2 is equal to minus 2, and then we have the square root of x squared plus 3x minus 3. Now we can divide both sides by, min or by 2. Let's leave the minus on the right-hand side. These go away. So we end up with x minus 2 is equal to minus square root x squared plus 3x minus 3. And now we square both sides and we use that formula we used earlier, the formula for a minus b squared again, right? So squaring both sides. On this left-hand side, we're going to apply the formula. Again, think of x as your first term and 2 as your second term. So you square the first. So you get x squared. You multiply them and double them. So if you multiply them, you get minus 2x. 
times 2 is minus 4x. And then you square the last, that's going to give you 4. This is equal to, now because the negative is over here and it's being squared, it's really a negative 1, it's just going to go away because negative 1 squared is 1. And then we just square the square root and that goes away. So we get x squared plus 3x minus 3. Very nice. And look at this. <laughs> the 3x's cancel. So we get negative 4x plus 4 is equal to 3x minus 3. And let's see what we can do next. Let's maybe subtract um, the 3x and subtract the 4. So if we subtract 3x from both sides, we're going to get minus 7x. Subtract a 4, uh, we're going to get minus 7. All right, so you can do minus 3x, minus 3x. Maybe it's a little more clear so you can see it. Minus 4, minus 4. We get minus 4x, minus 3x is minus 7x. Minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7. Divide by negative 7. And we get the beautiful answer of x equals 1, which is absolutely amazing. However, we're not done. So whenever you have equations with square roots, you should always check your answers. Sometimes you'll get an answer like this and it won't check. Whenever that happens, it's called an extraneous solution. So when you check, we have to go all the way back and plug it into the original equation, which was up here in blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it again down here in blue. And then we're going to manually check because it's really important to do it. So we have the square root of x squared plus 5x minus 6 plus, and then the square root of x squared plus 3x minus 3, and that's equal to 1. Now we're going to take this 1 and we're going to plug it in where all of the x's are. So I'm going to switch to yellow here. So we have the square root of, it'll be 1 squared plus 5 times 1 minus 6 plus, and then this is the square root of 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 3. This is equal to, so it's 1 plus 5, which is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. So we get square root of 0 plus, and these cancel, so we get the square root of 1. We get 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1, so it checks. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, so it's true. The answer is, in fact, x equals 1. Some people will want you to uh, write the solution set. The solution set is the set of all solutions, so you would write it like this if you had to. It's the set containing the number 1, because 1 is the only solution to this equation. Kind of an interesting problem. It looked really scary, but um, it really wasn't. It really wasn't that bad. Hopefully this video has been helpful and you've learned some math. Until next time, good luck. Take care.